Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, government-sponsored cyber surveillance is in the news again following an expose in the UK's Guardian newspaper talking about a piece of malware called Pegasus, which is allowing governments around the world to spy on people, turning their smartphones into effectively fully-fledged surveillance devices that can record audio, record video, look at the photos they've got, look at the messages they've got, and so on. Today I want to look at what is Pegasus, how does it work, how does it infect phones, and what can you do, maybe, to protect yourself. Well, if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, Pegasus is probably the most sophisticated piece of malware that we know about. Now, it's made by a company called the NSO Group, and they only sell it to governments. The idea is meant to be used in a fight against terrorism. Now, the expose in The Guardian has found some leaked information that shows that some of these governments that are using Pegasus are not just targeting terrorists, but also people of interest that may align or not align with their political plans. And of course, this is causing a big stir around the world. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of it. What I want to look at, though, is how does Pegasus work and what does it do? Now, the earliest versions of Pegasus have been seen since 2016, so we knew about its existence. However, it's becoming more and more powerful and more and more capable. And at its fully fledged capabilities, it's able to basically turn any smartphone, Android or iOS, into a full surveillance device. That means it can look at the messages, it can record phone calls, it can record audio through the microphone, it can make video, it can take photos, it can look at the photos that are already on the device and so on. It can even access location data. Now, if you combine all those things together, basically the person carrying the phone is basically taking whichever government it is that's spying on them around with them everywhere they go and showing them everything that they are doing. Now, this kind of technology does not come cheap. If you want to license Pegasus and you want to use it as a government, you need to pay millions of dollars, not even hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to get your hands on this tech. Now, all software has bugs. It's a fact. And the more complex that software is, the more bugs there are. In fact, there are metrics where you can measure the number of bugs versus the size of any particular project. Now, most bugs are just an inconvenience. You try to use a piece of software to do something and it doesn't quite work. Or when the data isn't quite what they expect, it doesn't work in the way they expect. The UI has got a glitch, that kind of thing. And they basically, they get fixed in the next kind of point release where they roll out an update and all oh, that thing that was annoying you is now working, isn't that? great. However, there are a category of bugs that are very, very serious, and they are security-related bugs. Now, security-related bugs exist everywhere. They exist in Android, they exist in iOS, they exist in Windows, they exist in Linux, they exist in Mac OS, they exist absolutely everywhere. They exist in applications themselves, they exist in network services, they exist in the servers that are running all the stuff we're doing. They are absolutely everywhere. And the reason they are serious is because once you can breach the security, then you have unauthorized access. And of course, Pegasus is all about unauthorized access to gain access to things that they shouldn't have access to. Now, a lot of companies treat these security uh, bugs very seriously. For example, Google has a vulnerability reward program where if you can find a problem in Android or in Chrome or in the Play Store and demonstrate that using that bug, you're able to bypass some kind of security mechanism, they'll give you money. They'll pay you for your time. And there are actual professional researchers who spend their time trying to crack into uh, Chrome and into Android and into iOS and into Amazon's web services and into Windows stuff. And uh, the companies like Google and Microsoft and Amazon, they pay the money for the things that they have found out. In fact, in 2020, Google paid out $6.7 million to people who had found different security errors in Android, Chrome and so on. The problem is there are more errors, more bugs than there are security researchers. And there are some security researchers like those at NSO that do the research, find the bug, and then don't tell Google, they don't tell Apple, they don't tell Microsoft, they keep it for themselves. In fact, NSO Group has also been known to buy such bugs off people, paying more than Google would pay, paying more than Apple would pay, and then keep that bug for themselves. 
Now, Pegasus works using what's called zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, a zero-day vulnerability is a bug that a group like uh, NSO Group know about, people know about, but the authors don't know about. So a bug that they know about that Google don't know, or they know about and Apple don't know. And it's called a zero-day vulnerability because the vendor, the author of the software, has had exactly zero days in which it's been able to tackle and address and fix this particular problem. Why zero days? Because they don't know about it. It's a hidden bug that some people know about, but the manufacturer, the OEM, the vendor, the author doesn't know anything about it. Now, when you have a hidden bug that you're able to exploit, so first of all, you need to find a problem, then you need to exploit it. And then using that exploit, you want to gain privileges, gain access that you can't normally have. And that's what Pegasus does. It finds what are weaknesses in Android devices, in iOS devices, and then able to worm its way into that device and then bypassing the normal security, bypassing the normal checks that Apple and Google have inside their operating systems, it's able to kind of secrete itself in there and then start its spying activities. And it will open up a network connection back to a server somewhere that's passing back the photos, passing back the audio recordings, so that the people running it can actually then see and hear what's going on around the person that's being targeted. I just want to underline again that I'm not looking at the politics of this, I'm not looking at the ethics of it or the morals of it, I'm just looking at the technology. Now for Pegasus to get onto a device, it needs what's known as an attack vector. There has to be a way in which the attack can be launched to target that device. Now the most obvious method for starting the attack is via a link. So a link is sent via an SMS or an iMessage or a WhatsApp message, and then the user unbeknownly clicks on it because they think it's to do with their banking or a credit card or something like that, a delivery of a parcel even, okay? And then they click on it, and in fact what actually happens, it takes them to a website, which then probably redirects them to somewhere more well-known, like the, uh, their online bank or something. But in that first redirect, it actually started to download something onto their device, and then that payload, its job, was to start to exploit the uh, zero-day uh, vulnerability. Unfortunately, there are some examples of what they call zero-click exploits, where they're actually able to target a device without the user doing anything, without even clicking on something. Back in 2019, there were some errors on FaceTime on the iPhone that allowed Pegasus to install itself just by initiating a call towards that device. Apple then did fix those errors, but there was a period, as far as I understand, for about three months where Pegasus was able to install itself on devices and then uh, the user had no idea. They didn't even click on a suspicious link. It just happened. And of course, that's why we have this kind of cat and mouse game between Apple and Google and so on, and then the people like the NSO group who are trying to find these exploits and these vulnerabilities, and they're always trying to do one uh, better than the other. Now let's look quickly at how you might be able to protect yourself against malware like Pegasus. However, I will say to you from the beginning, if you are being targeted by a government agency that has in its hands tools like Pegasus, or other tools that exist, then there's pretty much little chance you've got of protecting yourself. That's just a fact. It might sound scary, but that's actually how it is. Now, there are a few things that you can do, and the most drastic is toss your smartphone in the bin. If you are involved in any kind of activity that could be targeted by a regime or a government that you are somehow talking against or doing something against, then you need to toss your smartphone away because if by doing that, you've taken away that level of access. Now, they may have other tools at their hands, you know, old fashioned feet on the streets and cameras and so on. But in terms of your smartphone, it's absolutely not a way forward. Another thing, of course, you can do is leave your smartphone at home when you go out. So that way, if you do go to meet somebody, if you do go to a meeting, if you do get involved in something, then they're not able to track what you're doing from your smartphone because it isn't with you. It's not being carried on your person. And then maybe another possibility would do things like to disable the camera. And there's a very famous video 
by uh, Edward Snowden showing how you can literally just take the camera out of the smartphone. So therefore, if it ever does get infected, it can't use that particular thing. However, that in itself is not a full protection because other things like your calls and your emails are also still exposed when using things like Pegasus. Now, if you don't think your life is in that much of a drastic uh, danger from some kind of authoritarian regime, then there are other things that you can do. The most important is to always keep your phone up to date. So when Google or Apple or other people do discover an error in their software, they will release uh, a patch and that patch will fix the problem. And so whenever new versions come out of Android, whenever new versions of iOS come out, you need to upgrade your device. Now with Apple, that's fairly simple because Apple support their devices within a certain window. If you have a supported device, it will get an update. With Android, it can be a bit more tricky. Some vendors are very good at sending out the updates. Others are a bit more lackadaisical. If you really want to be sure, then you get yourself a Pixel phone from Google because they are the ones that get the first update. So you know you're always got the latest and greatest. Now, another thing that you can really, really help is do not click on suspicious links. Never, never be tempted. Don't look at it and go, well, maybe it's okay. If there's even a tiny, tiny doubt in your mind that why did you suddenly get that message? Why are they sending that message about this parcel that hasn't been delivered or this thing to do with your bank? You didn't know anything about that. Don't click on it. Whatever you do, don't click, just delete the message. If it's important, you will get contacted another way by phone, by, by letter, by whatever. Do not click on the link. Clicking on links is the biggest way that malware gets onto our devices. And it's also worth pointing out if you are using uh, an Android device or you're using a, an iPhone that's been jailbreaked, do not install third party apps because you don't know what you're getting. They may say, oh, this is just a mirror of you know, Angry Birds, but it's not. It's actually a version of Angry Birds with something else built into it. And you've got no guarantee, no way of checking that what you're clicking on and downloading is actually the genuine thing. It's most likely got some kind of malware in it. And the worst case, it could have something as sophisticated as Pegasus in it. And the last thing to mention is if you are an iPhone user, don't rest in a kind of complacency thinking that iPhone is more secure than Android. It's not. I have a video here on this channel from 2019 talking about how the Chinese government was using iPhones to target certain uh, ethnic groups in China for exactly the same thing, for spying and for seeing what they were up to. Now, I've got a written article that goes with this, and in that article, I actually look at the number of bugs, critical bugs that are in iOS, that are in Android, and compare the two of them. And while Apple does do a better job in certain areas, it's certainly not like, you know, zero versus a thousand. I mean, we're talking that both devices have had and always will have uh, serious vulnerabilities that can bypass the most basic levels of the security. And those are being used by Pegasus for Android and for iOS to enable this spying by state-sponsored surveillance groups. And let's just bring this to a light-hearted end. Watch this clip. And detective, leave your phone on when you talk to Congressman Hallen. You can hear me all the time? Yes, and I'm hearing rather too much of your lower intestine. Could you possibly move your phone from your belt to your jacket pocket? Okay, so ultimately we don't need to lose our heads. You're probably not being targeted. However, the fact that these groups are targeting normal people, business leaders, union leaders, religious leaders, and it seems to be their friends or their family, then you do need to be at least aware that maybe if there is someone in your family that is a human rights activist, a human rights lawyer, then just because you're not that person doesn't mean that the government that's looking to get to them is not going to go through you and your device. So always be aware what you're doing. Just be aware of it so that you know if you do get a suspicious link, if you do see something funny on your phone, you can think seriously about it. Don't ignore it, but don't panic about it either. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Pegasus malware and how it is used. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. I also hope you're following me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And also have a newsletter which you might be interested in. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.